Wow, what a night. What a finish to a great night. Man, you know, I get teary-eyed, but you know, I cry at everything. I cry when Bambi was shot, <laughs> I was so I mean. <laughs> Joining us right now is Alan Kay, the uh, 2004 the Teacher of the Year. Alan, uh, I, I love your humility. I, I think that that is always a wonderful sign of somebody who is so appreciative of this award. Congratulations. Thank you so much, it really is an honor. Now, it, it just sounds like you didn't even expect to win. I didn't even really think about it. I, I didn't want to. I just wanted to enjoy the honor that I was getting you know, by being nominated. History has often, especially these days, seems to have been slighted in terms of pa being passed over. And yet, if we don't learn from history, we are doomed to repeat the mistakes in our future. Well, yeah, actually, absolutely. In fact, I'm even writing a book about that. I feel so strongly about it. I've written books for kids. Now I'm writing books for adults. I'm really on a mission to get kids to realize the power of history, not just for the country, but for themselves, too. And Alan, while we're talking about the power of history, let's talk about the power of teaching. Can okay. you tell us a story uh, that has brought you here today, that, has, that really you know, touches your heart and makes you say every day, yes, this is why I love to do what I do? There must be I, a million stories There like is that. a million stories. And actually, the thing that I love to do is every year I buy a yearbook, and I have my kids sign it. And I just sit there for hours and hours and read the kinds of things that they do, and there's nothing more rewarding than that. I'll be honest, I don't even look at my paycheck, because that's my paycheck. I know it sounds really, really corny, but that, that's the truth. Well, Anna, we sure appreciate what you're doing for your kids in there. And what is the secret of, of getting kids involved in history? Just being animated? Uh, I mean, you know, give some of our other teachers some, some hope here. Well, to be honest, the number one thing is to make them realize that History is a story about people, and they're the same as they are. And so I recreate history in the classroom and put them in the same situations, and the kids realize, wow, what would I do if I were in that situation? And you ask them the questions. Instead of telling them stuff, you let them discover it. What would you do if you were in that situation? And it gets them excited, and they feel important because you empower the kids, and that's what it's all about, empowerment. Hmm. And it's so much more about just history. It's about life lessons as well, isn't Absolutely. it? Isn't that what you're teaching? Yeah, it's, it's about, and I tell them this, it's, it's about how humans react, and I even bring it down to the level as how you should act with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, learn to see what do humans do in different situations, and to take that lesson from there and then expand on it. Well, Alan, thank you so much for joining us. We've had a wonderful time again. And again, congratulations to you, and keep up the good work. And now this is how much this guy is into history, OK? See oh. this little card that yes. we have in our hands here? <laughs> yes, we both got one. A reminder, you're invited to the Pinellas History Fair on March 31st at Dunedin High School. <laughs> Please email Alan K or call to attend or to judge. So again, this is the commercial Pinellas <laughs> History Fair, March 31st, Dunedin High School. Alan K, thank you so much. Great. Thank Please. you so much for everything you do. 2004 Teacher of the Year. The history teacher that made history tonight. We salute you, Alan. Hey, we've had fun. Thank you so much for showing up. We'll be back again next year with another outstanding teachers. And to all of you teachers out there, thank you for the job that you do for us and for our children. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Too good to be true Can't take my eyes off you You'd be like heaven to touch I wanna hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just
just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off you Pardon the way that I stare There's nothing else to compare The sight of you leaves me weak There are no words left to speak But if you feel like I Hi there, I'm Alan Kay, and what you're about to see is a recreation of World War I. Every single student has a character sheet, and on this character sheet they have recreated the past. They're actual individuals in American society. They have actually made choices about foreign policy and ranked their different choices. And then what I'm going to do for you is I'm going, or for them, I'm going to be introducing different events in American history, the Lusitania, et cetera. We're going to have students who are the president, students who are Congress, and they're going to have to make a decision as to whether to go to war. And the most important thing for you to, dis to understand here is that their decision will have an impact upon them. So they're not just doing it for fun. They, you'll see the concern in their faces, the doubts, et cetera. So I hope you enjoy. We've got the president and the Congress. Now, you guys have to really get involved in this because whatever you do will affect your character. If we go to war, you may go to war. If we make money selling stuff to people, you'll make money. So you're kind of playing two roles today. You get to vote as the Congress and the President, but whatever you do will affect your historical character. Clear on that? Everybody? Yeah. Cool. All right. You were elected in 1912. For the first two years, everything was cool. Everything was going all right. Your biggest enemies were like the trusts and, and management and bosses and stuff like that. But then something happens. Terrorism in 1914, specifically in Austria. The Archduke, who is the heir to the Austrian throne, and a lot of us have no idea what's going on here because we've never talked about this before. Most Americans couldn't find Austria on a map either back then or today. But the murder of one man by a terrorist group called the Black Hand will make the whole world go to war. And you're going to need to decide right now if you want to go and get involved in that war. Everybody's in it. Let me show you basically what happened. This and now I just want to know what you want to do. Take a look at your score sheet again. See what's important to you. Think about how war will affect your character. Yes? Why did people kill the Duke? Um, the Serbian terrorist group killed the Archduke because they wanted this to happen. They, fe they felt that when the Austrians moved in, that the Russians would protect them and they would gain complete independence from Austria. Does Russia know that this is what they were trying to do? Um, no, because it wasn't done by an official press in the government. It was done by kids. You should all know this. World War I was started by kids your age. Well, let's, again, let's take one quick vote. How many of you want to go to war? How many of you are against war? How many of you aren't sure? I think, personally, I think if you're going to go to war, you need more support than that. Hey, we redo the count. So do you want, but it's your decision. Do you want to go or do you want to wait and see? I think we should go to war, Mr. K, on the side of the Austrians. I don't want to say the No. French wait a second. Go ahead. Um, are there other ways that you can more other than actually, <coughs> Finally, yes, someone's starting to think, ah, how about making some money off this thing? You're all thinking about fighting. There are other options. Remember, always think of the consequences. Think of what, not just what will happen if I do this and if I don't, but do I have any other options? Yes. Sell things. Let these guys kill each other. Sell them stuff, and then 
maybe go to war later. It'd be a lot easier to beat any of them if they're weak after fighting each other. What do you think the Americans did to the Indians all the time? Sell both of them. Right? Mr. Get both sides. Yeah, why not? Sell them both things. Let them kill each other, and then change your mind. Mr. Gabe, would it be like the, um, the British embargo or something or other when they were taking our people? It could be, or it might not be. I mean... Well, like, won't one side get mad at us and try to... Yes, but obviously they won't be as mad as if you declare war against them. So I'm just saying that's the third option, what Elise is asking. That third option is... Yeah, you can do that. Like, send mashes in there and then... You can, yeah, you can, and you can wait. You can wait it out, see who, which side is clearly going to win, and then you can be like the cavalry coming over the hill. <laughs> you know, we've just come to save you, and everyone's going to love America because you've just saved them from the big bad Germans or the big bad French. But now you can go in, you're not sure. What if you choose the wrong side? I think we should do it at least. All right. Okay. You want it, so you want to propose just selling things to them? Yeah, just you know, helping them out first, and then coming in later when one of them's. Oh, something sugar. Awesome. All right, so you want to sell to both sides. Let's yeah. let's see what. If you guys agree with the president, you want to sell goods to both sides in the war. Raise yeah, your hands. Oh, that sounds good. That's what we actually. All say. right. Are we selling food or are we selling Take everything? out your pay sheets. Take out your pay sheets. Anything they need: food, weapons, money. Give them loans. Anything they need, you can sell them. Uh, my teaching style is based on uh, John Dewey's idea that an, an idea taught is simply another fact. And so the way I teach is to try to recreate historical situations as much as possible for my students and to have them come up with similar uh, solutions and sometimes different solutions to the problems of history. And so they remember history because they have actually lived through it. The pronoun, they did it turns into, I did it. When I think of what I hope my teachers are like in college and people that I can really learn from that are wise rather than just educated, that's almost how I see Mr. K and he just kind of makes me feel like I'm actually being engaged in learning and that sort of thing. I have believed since I was in grade school that history is one of the greatest things on earth to study and not just not just as an academic study but as a way of giving people real power the, the power of knowledge and I believe it so fervently that it pains me to see it taught wrong I mean it literally pains me I, I can't deal with it when I see history being seen as boring by students it just aggravates me and so I've gone on a personal mission for the past 15 years really to not just um, make history exciting in my own classes but to get kids excited about history in other schools and really around the nation. I've written books to, to try to make history exciting. I have gone to um, organizations and like the Daughters of the American Revolution, Rotary Clubs, other social studies conventions and just general teachers conventions to try to pass on to my colleagues how much power and excitement there is in history. I think that he doesn't get nearly enough credit for History Day, which is an event that he does, basically that he brought to this area in the state and started entirely himself, that you more or less as a student choose anything you want, anything from history, anything, it could be modern history, it could be ancient history, whatever it is that you happen to be interested in, and study it and then present it in whatever format that you choose, be it a board, play, whatever. Um, and, and that's, that's quite, a, quite a task to organize all that, not only for the, the county level, but for the state level as well. Um, because History Day isn't just about history. There's a lot more involved in creating a pro in thinking of a topic, researching it, creating it, and all that stuff. And he shows you how in each step of the way, you need to be devoted to doing the very best you can. You need to do the best research. You need to pick the best topic you can think of. You need to put forth your best effort. And that's something that I've 